Hello together! Today I want to talk about how to use an Adlon XP or just Adlon system with a modern power supply. This topic becomes now more and more important as uh, many power supplies today don't uh, have a strong 5V rail anymore and uh, for many Adlon XP or Adlon systems this is required. Before I go more into detail, I want to mention that you can build very nice retro systems on an Adlon XP. For example, for Windows 98 or early Windows XP gaming. They can be very flexible if you unlock the multiplier, which is possible on many systems. Then you can also change the multiplier on the fly during system operation. So, yeah, um, I think they are really worth to preserve these systems um, as they can be a really nice retro machine. So, let's start. What's the problem and why does it only occur on uh, socket A? The point is that uh, many old socket A mainboards supply the CPU from the 5 volt rail. That was common at the time and uh, also other platforms before uh, used the 5 volt uh, rail to supply their CPUs like socket 7, like slot 1. Um, but the difference is the power consumption. An Elon XP can um, consume up to around 80 watts. I researched some values here for you. Um, yeah, so you need around 16 amps from the 5 volt rail only for the CPU. And if you now compare it with a Super Socket 7, even a power hungry CPU for this socket only needs around 30 watts. So you need only around 6.5 amps for the, for the CPU from the 5 volt rail. So you see directly here's a very big gap and that's in the end, the difference why you have the problem with one system and not with, with the other. And um, yeah, newer systems use, are using the 12 volt rail. There it doesn't care because uh, modern power supplies um, are designed for a strong 12 volt rail. Uh, they expect that you supply the CPU from the 12, 12 volt rail, so there's no problem at all. Um, but if you look on, on uh, a new power supply on the data sheet, then you directly see um, the 5 volt rail is um, not so powerful. In most cases, not even 20 amps. And yeah, if you now see that we already used 16 amp only for the CPU. You need uh, some additional current for uh, hard drive, for GPU, for mainboard itself. So expect that even 20 amps could be uh, too less. So yeah, that's the point why you um, can facing this issue with an Adlon XP system and not with a Pentium 4, they have uh, the 12 watt supply. Or with a Super Socket 7, they have a lower power consumption. So now that we understood the problem, what can we do? So the easiest option for sure on the first look is um, to use an old power supply with a very strong 5 volt trail. For example, here. Uh, a be quiet power supply from the from the year around 2012, relatively modern for this uh, strong uh, five volt rail. But there are some drawbacks with this option. First of all, the efficiency for sure is not up to date. But um, there's a, a bigger, a more important point: um, the reliability of a more than 10 year old power supply, uh, yeah. The chance is higher that the power supply will fail and uh, especially for the future, for the next five years or 10 years, that's perhaps not the best option. But uh, what can you do else? The second option is uh, to change parts. 
Yeah, for sure, uh, we still want a socket A machine. Um, nevertheless, we can use um, socket A mainboard, which supplies the CPU from the 12 volt rail. Um, then it behaves like a modern PC system, a high load on 12 volt rail. Um, that's what modern power supplies expect. So then it's perfectly fine. You can relatively easy find these main boards by looking on the P4 connector. This connector um, is for, uh, for the supply of the CPU. It's named uh, yeah, P4 connector as it was introduced with the Pentium 4. And yeah, if you have a board with this connector, then the chance is very high that the CPU is supplied by the 12 volt. And then your system behaves like a Pentium 4 system, and then you're fine. But uh, yeah, then you have to change the mainboard, and I'm sure many people don't want to change their mainboard. I also don't want to change my mainboard, so this was no option for me. Nevertheless, you can change other parts, for example, the graphics card. The problem is to find out which card uses uh, not much power from the 5 volt rail. Um, it's really difficult to find this out. Um, the only simple rule that I can give to you is that a graphics card without a 4-pin Molex connector, that is, that's uh, the 4-pin power connector, a card without this connector uses not more than 2 amps on the 5 volt rail because that's the HEP specification. So that's the only easy rule here. Um, if you have a look on this picture here of this graphics card, it has a PCI Express connector that's not really common, but this X850 card has this connector. Um, this connector is also perfectly fine because this connector only um, supplies 12 volts. So yeah, this card is also fine. We can be absolutely sure it doesn't need more than 2 amps from the 5 volt rail. I will later uh, measure some cards for you. Um, yeah. Next part, the CPU. You can also save power at the CPU. Then this problem is also um, decreasing. Um, the best official examples are uh, the Geode CPUs, for example, the NX1750, which uses only around 25 watts. With this CPU, your system will behave like a Super Socket 7 system or Slot 1 system with uh, low power consumption and uh, therefore you will not face any issues with a power supply if it have at least 15 amps or something like this on the 5 volt rail. But um, there's also a problem with this CPU. Um, this CPU needs a very low uh, voltage V-core, only uh, 1 or 1.25, and not all boards uh, support this. And this CPU is also relatively slow with just 1.4 GHz. So, yeah. Perhaps also not the best option. You will lose a lot of performance. Yeah. And just one hint, don't use the NX2001. It, it sounds like a Geode NX CPU, but this is just a renamed uh, Adlon XP. So uh, don't use it, you will not save any power. So let's come to the third option. We can do what many people do today for reducing the power consumption of their systems. Underclock and underwalt the CPU. Yes, that's also possible with Adlon XP. Why not? Um, we can unlock um, the multiplier by uh, modding the so called L bridges. You can see here this bridge. I marked it on the CPU. This unlocks the CPU. I will make a more detailed uh, video about this topic later. Um, here, then you have an open multiplier. 
and uh, the voltage change. Yeah, many main boards uh, can change uh, the core voltage directly in the BIOS, but you can also mod this uh, voltage uh, with these so-called L bridges. So you can also mod it in hardware, or for sure, you can also mod it directly on the board, or your board um, supports changing the voltage with jumpers. That would be also fine. Before we come to some tests, let's have a short look on the test system. I used an old Biostar M7 MIA, which is great for retro computing as, an, as it has an ISA slot. So you can use an old sound card for Windows 98 or DOS gaming. Um, the FSB is limited to 133 megahertz, but that's no problem. As we have an open multiplier, we can still use uh, the full frequency of the CPU. Um, I added a SATA controller for using modern SSDs and a USB 2 card for fast file transfers. Yeah, finally, uh, the power supply is an old NMX Liberty with a strong 5 volt rail so that we can. Uh, also test the CPU with full uh, current consumption on the 5 volt rail. So let's come to the first test results. We start with the GPU test results. So I will compare some GPUs. Um, here are all results, but they are not really clear. Uh, I decided to just concentrate on the 5 volt results and subtract the mainboard and uh, CPU that we can better compare these cards. And now we have a much clearer view on the results. Um, the results are very interesting. The most powerful card, the X850 XT, has the lowest current consumption uh, of all cards on the 5 volt rail. It doesn't really use the 5 volt at all. Um, but uh, a hint Keep in mind that there are different X850 cards and uh, I read in the internet that some of them use the 5 volt rail and some of all them have also a 4 pin Molex connector so they can also use more than just 2 amps on the 5 volt rail. So yeah, be careful that you get the right card. As next, we have the passive Radon 9600 XT from Sapphire and the S3 Trio. Um, the S3 card was just uh, used as a reference. It only uses the 5 volt rail and uh, consumes only a very little power. So it's, it's a good reference that you can see what do the other cards uh, need from the rails or from for the complete power consumption. Um, yeah, the S3 card doesn't even have a passive cooler. Um, the last two cards in this comparison here are uh, GeForce FX cards from NVIDIA. They consume a lot of current from the 5 volt rail and uh, expect that they even use more in case of an ultra version. Mm, the FX3000 that I used here, uh, the Quattro version, is uh, only an FX5900. The Ultra versions are clocked even higher. Yeah. But um, if you now think that uh, ATI cards in general are better regarding the 5 volt issue, um, then I must disappoint you. From the values I found in the internet and that I linked for you in the description, the Radon 9800 XT uses more than 4 amps on the 5 volt rail and is uh, yeah, therefore even worse than uh, the FX3000 Quattro here. So yeah, it's, it's really difficult. Um, yeah, to estimate the current consumption of the 5 volt rail of a card. You have to compare values in the internet and hope that the card that you then buy have a, a similar power consumption concept. Else it could be different from card to card. But all in all, we have a clear winner in this comparison, and uh, this is X850 XT. 
Now let's come to the next uh, test, CPU underclocking. So uh, I now just underclock the CPU, no change of the core voltage. Again, I have here the raw values for you, but uh, we will concentrate again only on the 5 volt rail. And uh, just uh, for your interest, uh, the measurement was done with the X850, as it doesn't influence the current consumption on the 5 volt rail at all. First of all, even the initial value is not as bad as expected. The 14 uh, amps are clearly below the 16 amps that I calculated before. Um, that's really interesting and uh, means that the problem isn't as big as expected. Nevertheless, you can for sure overload a modern PSU with a weak 5 volt rail. So now back to the bar graph. You can see the current consumption decreases uh, with the frequency. From the first to the second bar, the step was smaller because uh, there the multiplier chain is only uh, a half step. And yeah, you can see that the 5 volt issue can be at least reduced with a lower frequency. Um, but even with just 1.6 gigahertz, and yeah, this is really slow for an Adlon XP system, the current consumption was only reduced by uh, 3 amps, so the results are not really good. So let's go one step further and also decrease the voltage. As before, you can see here the raw values before we come to the bar plot. We can now see that the current consumption decreases tremendously, especially if you look at the value of 2 GHz at 1.45 volts. There we uh, saved one third of the current, but lost uh, less than 10% performance. Um, that's a very good result. We can save more than 4 amps on the 5 volt rail and this clearly can make uh, the difference if a modern power supply will work or not. I also tried lower voltages, uh, but uh, in my case I can't go below 1.45 volts because uh, the chipset uh, wants a minimum voltage of uh, 1.5 volts in the data sheet. So yeah, uh, already luck that it worked with 1.45 volts. Um, yeah, I can't go lower. Um, nevertheless, great result. And this also shows that uh, this Geode uh, CPUs with this uh, very low uh, core voltages um, don't work on all boards. I'm sure on this main board you have no chance to get them to work. So it's time for a conclusion. For remarkable uh, current reduction on the 5 volt rail, you have to undervolt the CPU. But Adlon XP's, at least with Barton Core as used here, undervolt very well. Additionally, we found out that the right graphics card can also help to reduce uh, lo the load on the 5 volt rail. At least you can save a few amps. So, yeah, a modern high quality power supply, that's important, high quality, uh, because only a uh, high quality supply uh, give you uh, what is described in the specification. Um, but a high quality power supply with 20 amps on the 5 volt rail is absolutely fine if you tweak a little bit on the CPU's power consumption. And uh, if you optimize your system very well, I'm sure even less than 15 amps on the 5 volt rail can be enough. We measured it here. So yeah, the future of the 5 volt Adlon XP systems is saved. Finally, you found here some additional information regarding the test setup. Thanks for watching and goodbye.